Hello everyone, David A. Cox here with Tech Talk America, and today I'm going to teach all of you at home how to keyframe audio in Final Cut Pro, coming up next on TechTalkAmerica.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the class, David A. Cox here, and today we're going to be talking about how to make adjustments to audio through keyframing. And when I teach these kind of classes, one of the things I really love to do is I love to give you a real life example of how I actually use this. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, some of the other work that I've done outside of Tech Talk America, I, I have this whole second brand that I developed uh, just really more than anything for fun and then it started becoming for business, uh, where basically I have this business where I film different events with a combination of my iPhone, a DSLR, and I own a couple of different aerial drones. And so this was just a fun video that I shot last weekend um, of this tall ship that was coming into town where I live. I, I live in Provincetown, Massachusetts, the very, very tip of Cape Cod. It was very, very pretty. For the first time, I think, ever, we had zero wind. And so I just want to make this kind of fun little video to share with the public of the boat coming into town. Very, very simple. So I've got my video footage right here. Of course, the drone itself doesn't record audio because all you'd hear is a buzzing noise. Uh, below it, I have an audio track here, and I just want to say real quickly, for those of you out there who are content creators or looking to become content creators, one of the things that's really, really hard is to find good music. Uh, I, I, For some of my videos, I've gone through as many as 800 pieces of music just trying to find like that perfect one track. And if I can just kind of teach you from my experience, uh, there's this website that I've used a lot of uh, called Audio Jungle. And there's a very specific uh, artist at Audio Jungle that I really started to fall in love with his work because it's not only is it good, but it's also very, very diverse. So, you know, he's kind of got a little bit of everything for everyone. If you're looking for music for your project, I think you should consider giving him a check out. Uh, so a check out, check him out whatever. Link in the description of the video if you want to check out uh, some of my uh, this guy's work because he's, he's very, very talented. But what I wanted to do, as much as I love this piece of music, here's my problem. I wanted to add a little bit of Cape Cod flair to it. And I thought maybe a good way to do that would be to just kind of add in a very subtle sound effect in the background of seagulls. So I grabbed this sound effect here from actually the Mac sound effect library of all places, and I'm just going to drag it right now into my timeline. Now, I want you to see the before and after of this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just playing you how it sounds just the first uh, 14 seconds or so. This is just how it sounds out of the can, and you'll notice the, the sound effects are all over the place. So let's just play it so that you have an idea of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, gets a little screechy after a while, huh? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a refinement change to the audio of these seagulls using keyframes. And one of the things that's great about this is this is a, a trick that you can use in all sorts of different projects, not just when you're dealing with sound effects. This is very, very handy when you're dealing with interviews, especially if your subject you know, has points where they're louder, points where they're softer, and you need to kind of make those transitions. You need to make it kind of even out. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to mute my audio on the computer just so I can really focus on what I'm doing here. Now, with this particular clip, the, the sound is okay up to this point, and then from here on is where they start to get a little bit screechy. So that's where we're going to start to make the change. So part one is you're going to click on the audio clip that you're working on, and you want your playhead to be you know right around that area as well. Now one thing that's kind of cool is that you can make refinement changes to this down the road. You can move it left or right to make it happen sooner or later. You can make it more or less dramatic of a change. So you don't need to get this dead on. You just need to do it. That's all. So we're going to go up here to uh, the top right in our inspector. If for whatever reason you don't see this window, it's this button right here. Okay, it's the little gears right here. And we're going to deal with this first option right here, volume. And we're going to click on this little diamond icon that you see here towards the right. And that is just going to add a keyframe to the shot. Now from here, what you can do is you can either drag the playhead, you can use your arrows, okay? But we're just gonna go a little bit to the right. It doesn't matter how much because again, you can change this later on. 
And now we're going to go back up here to the top right and we're going to just drag this puppy down. Okay, so we're going to tell it get nice and quiet. I'm going to do 25. Okay, so you can see now if I zoom in, we have just created that curve. Okay, so this is where the audio is normal and then it dips down and it transitions to become more quiet. Now, one of the things that's cool about this is these dots you can adjust one of two ways. You can drag them up and down to make them louder or softer. Okay, if I remember correctly, I think starting audio was supposed to be around minus nine, somewhere in thereabouts. Okay, but you can also make them shorter or longer by dragging left or right. So if I want this transition to happen a little bit more speedy, I can drag it left or right, just like that. So now let's play the after so you can kind of hear the difference. So now it should be a lot more subtle. So you can see it really made a big difference because otherwise it would just been really, really annoying. If you're curious to see uh, the final product of this video, by the way, I will give you a link to it in the description. Uh, it's located on Facebook, not on YouTube, so you'll have to go over there and watch it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, also, I wanted to say real quickly, for those of you out there who are leaving endless comments on other videos of mine, uh, asking about where is part two of my Final Cut Pro class. What I decided to do instead was, instead of overwhelming everyone with a two-hour class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down section by section and release it like this one in, for, in the form of shorter videos that are more digestible. It's much easier on my side as far as from an editing standpoint and I think it's just going to ultimately help everyone find what they really really want so look for more Final Cut Pro tutorials in the near future and uh, eventually we're going to get to covering some special effects unfortunately that part is very significantly delayed right now uh, out of my control so uh, we'll get to those as soon as we can but we've got a lot of fun coming up later on the summer as far as our various Final Cut tutorials so I hope you, if you haven't already done so please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.